Let's talk a little bit more about the idea of uh, magnification. Well, let's actually figure out the magnification here. This problem didn't ask us for that, but it could have. Let's figure out the magnification of this image for question one. Let's go back to the numbers we got from question one, 2.5 and 2.5. How would we find the magnification? And the first thing is to remember, we actually have an equation for this. We need to look up our magnification equation. <clears throat> so when you're ready, what is that magnification? M equals uh, negative image distance over uh, object distance. Right. I'm going to keep putting these curly cues on the O's so they don't look like zeros. Okay? All right. Well, let's work that out. Take your time. So you made some mistakes there, and then you corrected them. Good. So first of all, there's a negative sign from the equation. But then what was our image distance? Uh, negative 2.5. Yeah. So originally, I think you didn't write down any signs. And then you put in some signs, and then you corrected them. How do we know this is negative 2.5? Well, we already figured out before. This is a virtual image. A virtual image has a negative image distance. Again, you can see how easy it is to forget about the signs. We've got to put this sign in here, which is totally separate from the negative sign from the equation. And then the object distance is positive 2.5, because unless you have multiple lenses or mirrors, the object distance is always positive. Well, the two negatives cancel, and you end up with m equals, what did you say m was? One. That's good, but it would be better to report the sign as well. We always want to focus on the sign. What's our, what sign did we get? Positive. Just mathematically. Mathematically, this came out positive. Now, remember last time when we met, we saw that the, the, the variable m has two different pieces of information packed into it. Um, so what are the two different things that we could figure out when, if we're told that the m of something is positive 1? That it's upright image and that there's no magnification. Good. Or it's a magnification of 1. Which means no magnification. That means it's the same size uh, as the, uh, the image is the same size as the object. How do we know that it's upright? Because it's positive. Positive, it's upright. And we know that if the magnitude was bigger than 1, the image would be bigger than the object. And if the magnitude of m was smaller than 1, the image would be smaller than the object. So logically speaking, an m equal to 1 must mean the same size. We didn't actually talk about this case last time, but this actually tends to be pretty important on problems in tests. You're likely to see a problem where things are neither magnified nor shrunk. All right, so this is uh, upright and same size. And we already figured out it was virtual. So now we figured out all the different uh, characteristics of this image we got here. By the way, does that match our ray tracing picture? Yes. Did it come out upright? Yes, it came out upright. And did it come out same size? Well, we talked about if I was a better drawer, it would be the same size. They're pretty much the same size if I wasn't fiddling with the heights of these rays over here. So this confirms what we got from our ray tracing picture. And also, is this just common sense? Is this what you see when you look in the bathroom mirror? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see that you're an image that looks like it's behind the mirror, virtual. Um, you see an image that's upright. You're not upside down. And it looks about the same size as you. So these are all just our common sense. OK, um, so that's something we didn't talk about before. Um, we should know that an m of 1, if the magnitude is 1, that means same size. There's a very good chance that could come up. Also, this tells us something interesting. Um, that we should uh, talk about more now. What's the formula for the magnitude of m? So just focusing on the magnitudes, the magnification is the image distance over the object distance. Uh, I'm just looking at the magnitude, so I left out the signs. Um, so when will, at, when, will, when will the image be the same size as the object? When will m be 1? In magnitude, that's right. 
when the image distance is the same as the object distance, the image size will be the same as the object size. When will the image be bigger than the object? When will we have a magnified image? When uh, the object distance is smaller than the image distance. In magnitude. In magnitude. Okay. We don't want to focus on the signs here because that has to do with real and virtual. So I'll put in, this is a little awkward because I have two dots above the eye. One because it's an eye and one for magnitude. But anyway, a magnified image um, is one uh, where the I is bigger in magnitude than O. And this is kind of common sense. What this is telling us is the image size is bigger than the object size when the image distance is bigger than the object distance. That's not too hard to remember. And how about shrunk? It's when the image um, magnitude is smaller than the object magnitude. The image size is smaller than the object size when the image distance is smaller than the object distance. This is an important idea we didn't have time to talk about last time. The relationship between the sizes of the image and the object is the same as the relationship between the distances for the image and the object, if you're just focusing on magnitudes. The relationship between the sizes of the image and the object is the same as the relationship uh, between the distances for the image uh, and the object. We can see that if we just draw the embrane between the object and the image. Okay. So this distance here is what we could call the object distance. So notice basically we have two similar triangles. We have the triangle that the object makes on the left and the triangle that the image makes on the right. Um, the horizontal side of the object triangle is the object distance and the horizontal side of the image triangle is the image distance. Okay, uh, and then this over here is the object height. And this distance here, this vertical distance, is the image height over here. Anyway, it's pretty apparent that these are two similar triangles. They should have the same ratio over here. And this basically tells us if the object distance is bigger, the object's height is bigger. And since the image distance is smaller, the image height is smaller. So the point of this equation is just to give us a feel for the idea that um, a bigger object distance gives us a bigger object height. And a smaller image distance gives us a smaller image height um, over here. Um, there's a, a direct relationship between uh, distances and heights, or distances and sizes. So that actually comes up a lot, so it's important to be comfortable with. So again, the relationship between the image and object distances tells you the relationship between the image and object sizes. Uh, to remind you, uh, when we tried to figure out the magnification here, I think you might have gotten stuck for a couple seconds. And the thing that was getting us stuck is that I think maybe uh, we weren't remembering the magnification equation. A lot of times people just focus on the lens mirror equation. And they forget that there's this other very helpful equation too. So this is an important equation in our arsenal, but this is also very important. If you need to find the magnification, there's a good chance that you need this equation over here. All right, we also need to talk a little bit more about what it means to be a virtual image. Let's, somebody, let's say somebody is looking at the mirror here. Where does it seem like the light is coming from? Where does it seem like the light is coming from? It seems like the light is coming from here. It seems like the light is coming from here because this is where they see the image. But there, are there any actual light rays here? Well, no, this is just plaster, right? There's no actual light rays. This is why this is called a virtual image. A virtual image is an image uh, where there aren't actually any light, actual light rays coming from that point. If you actually, for example, um, put a piece of paper at this point, there would not be a spot on it because there isn't actually any light here. You couldn't start a fire by putting some kindling over here because there isn't actually any light over here. So a virtual image is called that because there's no light coming from where the image seems to be.